in there, we know that CU's distance is 5x. What else do we know? ST equals 240. So we know that this full length is 240. What is ST? Ah, uh, who said chord? Very good. It is a chord. Why is it a chord? Because it's not a diameter. It doesn't go through the middle, right? And it stops on two ends of the circle. Very good. Okay. What else is 240? QR. QR, excellent. So let's, put a, let's make a note of that. That's also 240. That was an awkward four. And then the last thing that we know, CV is how much? 6x minus 7. Okay. What do I do? Sophia? You are correct, but why? I absolutely do. But why am I able to do this? What about this problem told me that those two lengths would be the same? Cody? What about them? Okay. So if two chords are the same length, so two chords are the same length, what do I know about the line that creates a 90 degree angle with them? Yes. You're on the right track. I like that you said, what word did you say? Diameter? It does cut the cord in half. And it's also, those cords, if they're the same length, are the same distance from what? The center. So us drawing, just like Isabella said, that perpendicular mark, and like Cody was alluding to, that perpendicular mark says that the distance from this point C to this line is the same as that from the distance from C to the other chord. Does that make sense? That's why Sophia was able to set these two equal to each other, okay? All right, someone else walk me through solving this algebra equation. Kristen. Um, the side is both sides. Yep. Seven equals x. Very good, Kristen. X equals seven. Is that my answer? No. So I should pick D? No. no. Okay. Why is that not my answer? What did it want? Is the radius. Okay. We do not have the radius. X is just what X represents, right, in the context of this problem. So plug it in. That makes the distance of CU what? 35, okay? So we know that that length is 35. Now, there's only two radii that I was given. There were CW and CX. I'm not going to use either of those. What is the radius that I should draw so that I can use it. There's four possibilities. C to R. Good, Cody. So we have one side of our right triangle is 35. Does anyone know what this side is? It's 120. Why, Sophia? Very good. This radius is cutting this chord in half right? So it's congruent on both sides. 240 divided by 2 is 120. And how do I figure out the third side in a right triangle? Who said the P word? Who said it? Good, German. What is the P word? Pythagorean theorem. Very good. How do I set it up for this one? Excellent. And c squared, in which case you're correct, it's going to be our radius. So we can make it r squared. 35 squared plus 120 squared. I think I got like 15,000 something. What was it? Equals r squared. Then you take the square root and we get what? 125 equals r. And that was our answer. Hannah? Okay. <laughs> Where did I get 120? Okay, what's 240, which is the length of the chord, divided by 2? Oh. Okay, and that's where I got the 120. Because right so. remember, a right triangle has to have an angle of 90 degrees. Do you agree that this angle was already perpendicular? 
those two lines were perpendicular to one another, it gave that to us in the context of the problem. Go ahead. Go ahead. After one. What's that? Because remember, if you ever draw a radius or a diameter that's perpendicular to a chord, it's always going to cut it in half. Correct. The angles and the sides are different from one another. <laughs> it's okay. You wanted to use the 90 as a side? I don't know. I was either seeing the one side angle or something. Okay. It happens. What other questions do we have on the warm up? Okay. Overall, guys, quiz grades, very happy with those. Okay. You guys worked really hard. learning about something called an inscribed angle and an inscribed polygon, okay? Inscribed just means inside a circle, okay? And more specifically, right, it's going to represent like not just inside a circle, but actually on that circle as well, okay? So the angle is going to be inside, but the vertex is actually going to be on the circle, a little bit different than what we've seen in the past, okay? What we've seen in the past is something called a central angle, where the vertex was in the center of the circle, okay? All right, so what is an inscribed angle and an intercepted arc? An inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on a circle and whose sides contain chords of the circle. Guys, the vertex is no longer in the center for these angles. The vertex is going to be on the circle. Notice the blue angle has a vertex that is located on the circle. An arc that lies between the two lines, rays, or segments of an inscribed angle is called our intercepted arc. And that is the arc in red across from your angle, okay? The arc that gets created after you draw your inscribed angle. Okay, theorem 10.10 .10 says the measure of an inscribed angle theorem. Now, before you guys copy anything down, please, please, please focus your attention on me. I will give you time to copy this slide down, but look at me. Or actually look at the board. If I told you that AC was 80 degrees, what would you guys naturally say this angle B would be 80 degrees. 80 degrees. But that's what we had before. And before, all of our angles started from the middle. Do you guys remember that? This angle is not starting from the middle. Do you guys agree? This is a different type of angle. Now, how to figure out this angle is you must divide the arc by two. So it's going to be exactly half of the measure of the arc. So instead of 80 degrees, what is the measure of that angle B? It's going to be 40 degrees. Okay, now you can keep writing. Okay. So it's divided by 2? Correct. It's the arc that's created. In our case, AC I gave you was 80 degrees. We divide that 80 by 2, and we get the angle, the inscribed angle on the inside. Okay. Now, the arc, by the same logic, is also twice the measure of that inscribed angle, okay? So you could start with the 40, just be like, oh, I know I multiply by 2, and I can get the arc on the outside, okay? What questions do we have about this? Now, to show you the difference, okay, I want you guys to physically write this down. Write, like, you should also draw your center somewhere on your circle, towards the middle, obviously, and then draw the central angle that's the same, that creates the same arc. Now, this is what we were learning before, and I told you that angle right there, from A to the center to C, is how many degrees? That one's 80. And do you see the difference in size of the two angles? Do you guys agree that by moving the vertex further away to the edge of the circle, it creates that smaller angle? 
Do you guys agree that that angle of 40 is significantly smaller than the angle of 80? The angle of 80 opens up much wider than the one at 40. So that's to give you like perspective. When we're pulling that vertex away to the edge of the circle, it's creating a smaller angle than it would be if it was a central angle. That's why we're dividing by two, okay? What questions do we have on this example? Okay. Um, okay, now the inscribed angles of a circle theorem. Okay, this is theorem 10.11. If two inscribed angles of a circle intersect the same arc, then the angles are congruent. Guys, the notes in red are for me. Okay, you do not need to copy those down. Okay, the notes in red are for me. <clears throat> Okay, now how I wanna show you why this theorem makes sense is we're gonna use two different colors. So use two different colors, whatever colors you're like, fit, like, you like the most. I'm gonna use red and I'll use green. In red, I want you to outline angle one, but I want you to extend it past letter A. And I want you to extend it past letter B. And hypothetically, let's just say that we knew that the measure of the arc AB was, for example, 100 degrees. What would the measure of angle 1 be in this scenario? It would be 50. Very good. So this is going to be 50 degrees. Now, change your colors, whatever color you want to use next, and do the same thing for angle two. So continue angle two past point A and past point B. Do you guys agree that they've formed the same arc? I need us to be very clear that we can visualize that. Do you guys see how both of those angles form the same arc on the edge of the circle, that will always mean that those two angles are what? Congruent. Very good. So what does angle two have to also be? 50 degrees. And this happens 100% of the time. So as long as the same arc is created by both of the angles, they must be congruent to one another. Okay? Even though, do they have the same vertex? No, angle, angle one's vertex is over here, angle two's vertex is over here, but they are congruent because they have formed the same arc, the same intercepted arc, okay? Yes, go ahead, okay? All right, what questions do we have on this? Okay, um, I have some examples down below. You guys do not have these examples, so you can either write them in yourself or just take a photo. I'm gonna zoom in on example one right now. You can either take a picture or you can draw the picture yourself. You do not have this example in your, in your notes. What's that? Huh? This slide, you can either add a slide or you can merge them into this slide. This is slide number six in the whole document. <clears throat> Okay, and the instructions, sorry. The instructions say that we need to figure out what the measure of the red angle or the red arc is. Here, it's a red angle where the arc HF is 90 degrees. Who thinks they could figure out what the measure of that angle would have to be? Forty-five degrees is correct. How did you get forty-five degrees, Sherman? Excellent. We're just taking the measure of the arc and we're dividing it by two. And ninety by two, nine divided by two is forty-five degrees. Okay. What questions do we have on this example? What would be the measure of HDF? That would be 90 degrees. Very good. It changed from an 
inscribed angle to then a central angle, okay? Central angles, remember, are the exact same measure as the arc that they create, okay? All right, example two, go ahead and take a photo or draw it out. <clears throat> In example two, we're now looking for the red arc instead, okay? In example two, we're looking for the red arc instead of the red angle. Does anyone think they know how to come up with the measure of the arc? Daniel? 76. Why do you say that? Excellent. You do 38 degrees, which is the measure of the angle, and you multiply it by 2, which gives you 76. What questions do we have on this example? I just took the measure of the angle, which was 38 degrees, and I multiplied it by 2 to get the arc. Correct. And if you're finding the angle, divide by 2. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then example 3. Take a photo or draw it out. Any ideas as to what the red angle would be equal to? <clears throat> Hannah? 72 degrees is correct, but why? They create the same arc, which is arc. What's the name of this arc? ZW is correct. Remember, two inscribed angles that create the same arc, in this case, ZW, they must be congruent. Now, let's take it a step further in case it asks us this. What would be the measure of ZW? Cody? 144. How did you get that? It's 72 times 2. Very good. Okay? It would be 144 degrees. But what we were asked was that 72. Okay? What questions do we have on this example? Cody? So, um, Cody, do you agree that the angle here of 72, if you were to extend it, it would, it would intersect and form that arc right there in red? Wouldn't X... Z and XW form the same arc? Those two angles have to be congruent. Good question. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Any other questions, guys? Yes, Sophia. Of course. Um, yes. <clears throat> you can leave that on my desk. Oops. Uh-oh. Close. An inscribed polygon and a circumscribed circle. Guys, an inscribed polygon is a polygon with all of its vertices on a circle, okay? A circumscribed circle is the circle that contains the vertices of an inscribed polygon. So in other words, those red circles are considered circumscribed circles, and the blue shapes are the inscribed polygons. I like to remember it by inscribed, meaning it needs to be inside, right? And then circumscribed needs to be outside. So it's going to be that red circle, okay, that surrounds the figure. Now, I have a little uh, activity for us. I need you to draw a triangle inside this circle where one of its sides needs to be the diameter. So let's start by just approximating the center of the circle. So let's approximate the center of the circle right here. And then draw a diameter. Could be any diameter, but it needs to be go from one edge through the middle to the other edge. And then form an inscribed triangle. Any triangle that you want, okay? Using that line. And I'll use this, and I'll use this. Okay? 
I want you. Sure, that looks good. Yeah, that looks good, Christian. I want you to look at yours and look at your neighbors and look at mine. Every single triangle, as long as you did it the right way, you've all drawn right triangles, no matter what you did. I want you to think about why everyone has just drawn a right triangle. You have 30 seconds to discuss this in your groups. Go. Five, four, three, two, and one. So, um, does anyone think they know why everyone drew a right triangle? We, no, but every single person, if, no matter what your triangle looks like, like yours looks different than mine. Do you agree? Yours is still a right triangle. Mine is a right triangle. Daniel's is a right triangle. Juan's is a right triangle. But why? It definitely has to do with the fact that one of the sides was a diameter, yes. But why would that make all of our triangles a right triangle? Daniel? Very good. This arc has to be how many degrees? On everyone's paper, 180 degrees. Now, that arc is formed by which angle? This angle right here, do you guys agree? And that angle, if that arc is 180, that angle has to be what in relation to the arc? Two times. No, half of it. Oh, half. What's half of 180? 90. 90 degrees. Now, that happened for everyone because we were all told you had to have what segment on your circle? A diameter. So, the cool part is, is our next theorem is related to this. It says that if any of your sides in your triangle is the diameter of a circle, it has to be a right triangle. And the second theorem is the converse. If you have a right triangle, the only way you can draw a circle around it is if your hypotenuse is the diameter. Okay? So it's called the inscribed right triangle theorem. And it says, if a right triangle is inscribed in a circle, then the hypotenuse is the diameter of the circle. That has to happen, okay? Then it says, conversely, the opposite is true. If one side of an inscribed triangle is the diameter of the circle, then the triangle is a right triangle, and the angle opposite the diameter is the right angle. In other words, in this figure, if the measure of ABC was 90, then AC would have to be a diameter. And it also works in reverse. If AC is a diameter, then the angle ABC must be a right angle. What questions do we have on this slide? Okay. There's also an inscribed quadrilateral theorem. What is a quadrilateral? Square, rectangle. Square, rectangle. What do all those shapes have in common? Four sides. Excellent. It has to have four sides, okay? It will also have four angles. And a quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle if and only if. So this needs to be satisfied. Its opposite angles are supplementary. That's a vocab word from the past. What does the word supplementary mean? They add up to 180, okay? They add up to 180 degrees. Now remember, opposite angles are angles that are non-adjacent. They're across from each other. So what two angles in this diagram are non-adjacent and are across from each other? Yep, one and three and two and four. Very good. So in order for this quadrilateral to fit inside of the circle, where the circle is on the edge or uh, uh, intersects all the vertices, it would need to have this satisfied. Okay, the inscribed quadrilateral theorem. Yes. No, it's one eighty. Okay. What questions do we have on this slide?
Okay. An inscribed, an angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. So if you're only dealing with half the circle, okay, it has to be a right, it has to be a right angle, okay? There's no other way around it. And this goes back to what we just proved in the other one where we drew the diameter, okay? All right. Um, I think we're up to the examples. Yes, we are, okay? We're going to start by doing some examples. We have plenty of examples here to get it some practice. Find the values of X and Y in circle O. That 20, guys, is pointing to this angle right here for 20 degrees. And then Y is going to be the entire angle right there. Does anyone think they know what X is going to be? Ronnie? Excellent. X is 40 degrees. Why? Why is it 40, though, and not 20? Very good. It's 20 times 2. You have to multiply it by 2 to get you that arc. Okay? Um, what would the measure of Y be? Cody? 75, very good. How did you get 75 degrees? Why are you adding 110 and 40? Very good. Angle Y creates that arc on the outside, which is the 150 you just said. So this is 150. You divide 150 by 2 to get you the 75. Okay? Very good. What questions do we have on example one? Yes, Hannah. Say that one more time. Yep. So the 110, it matters because do you see how angle Y stems all the way from here all the way to here? You can't use just this piece of the arc, and you can't use just this piece of the arc. You have to use the whole thing. Does that make more sense? That's why we had to add them together. Good question. What other questions do we have? Oh, you could... oh yeah, that makes the whole thing. Okay, yeah, I got it. Okay. We're good? Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to letter B. Cody? X equals 20 degrees. Why? Excellent. They form the same arc. Do you guys see that? They form this arc right here, both of these angles. Therefore, they must be congruent. Good. So the X must be 20 degrees. What about Y? Nope. Not 60. Not 20. Remember, Y is pointing to this entire angle here. Let's think about the arc that it creates. Yep. It is 90. Why, Macy? The arc is a semicircle. Check this out, guys. If you extended it, wouldn't it also create that diameter, which makes a semicircle? How many degrees is a semicircle? 180 degrees, okay? Guys, I'll give you a hint. And you make sure that you highlight this. Anytime they give you a diameter, right? Did they give us a diameter? Sure did. They showed us it was going through the center of the circle. Use that to your advantage, okay? Use that to your advantage. The diameter will always create two 180-degree arcs. Use that to your advantage. The answer is 90 for Y. Y was 90 and X was 20. It was only asking us for X and Y. Okay? Um, half of the diameter. What do you mean by half the diameter? Like the radius? The semicircle? Yeah, because the arc that was created by it was this semicircle, which is half the circle. Okay? All right. Um,
on to letter C. What are we thinking? Bryson, answer my question. Uh, you fell for the trap. It's not equilateral, it's not equiangular. You fell for the trap. It only gave us one of the angles, right? You need two of the angles to figure out the third one. Do you agree? You can't just assume just because it looks like it's equiangular that it will be. Cody? X equals 120. Why? Because 60 times 2. You're absolutely right. Okay? That has to be 120. Hannah? Sure, go for it. Equals 100. Why? Very good. Absolutely right. So remember, the entire circle, the arcs, must add up to 180, or no, 360 degrees. We found two of them. We were only missing this last piece. You add both those other two angles and subtract it from 360, and you get 100 degrees. Could we have done this a different way? Cody? Yeah. And then you'd multiply by two to get you the arc. Very good. Okay. That's what you said too? Okay. Cody's are on the same page, guys. All right. What questions do we have on this example? Are we okay? Love it. D. Go ahead. X is 40. Why? Excellent, Hayden. You divide this 80 by 2 to give you the angle on the inside. Perfect. <clears throat> Do they give us a diameter? Use it to your advantage. So we know that the right-hand side is 180 and the left-hand side is 180. Do you guys agree? Okay. What does this arc have to be right here? What? It has to be what? Why does it have to be 100 degrees? Because it was 180 minus the 80 that we already used up top. Do you guys agree? Are there... I see two congruent chords. Do you guys also see two congruent chords? Did they not have congruence marks here and here? What do we know about chords that are the same length? They're congruent, yeah. What else do we know about? They have the same arc. So if this chord's arc was 100, what does this chord's arc have to be? 100. And that means that angle up there at Y must be how many degrees? Not 80, 50 degrees. Because it's, oh, you guys are talking about the arc. The arc, yes, is going to be 80 degrees. But why? Remember, why is this angle right here? Do you guys agree that that angle forms the arc of 100 degrees? Take the 100 divided by 2, what do you get? 50 degrees. So x was 40, y was 50. What questions do we have? Yes? Oh, because this had to be a 90 degree angle? Yeah. Um, yes, you could do that, okay? For this example, I would go by the arcs though, because that's gonna be more of a sure way, but you are correct. Yes, Ronnie. Why is that arc 100? Why is which arc 100? Okay, so remember, Ronnie, do you remember when we said if two chords were the same length, then their arcs also need to be the same length? So when we found that the bottom right one was 100, or were you cool finding the bottom right one was 100? Yeah. We could also say that the other side, which is the same chord, had to also be 100 degrees. Cool? Okay. 
Yeah. So if they didn't have the two congruent marks, you couldn't solve this problem? No. If there were no congruence marks on those two chords, you could not do this problem, okay? Because you needed to know something was the same between the two, okay? Good questions. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. Okay, moving on. Uh, just some tricky word situations. Always, sometimes, or never true. Every triangle can be sub circumscribed in a circle. So draw a random triangle. Make it look funky. Is every single triangle, is it possible to draw a circle so that each of the vertices is enclosed on that circle? Would we, able to, would we be able to do it for this one? I mean, I'm not perfect, right? You guys have perfect uh, tools, right, in your notability. Do you think we'd be able to do that for every single triangle that we could possibly come up with? No? The answer is yes. Okay? You can absolutely circumscribe every single triangle that you draw no matter what. Could be a right triangle, could be an acute triangle, could be an obtuse triangle. But why? Why do you think we're able to do this? Yes? So good, Juliet. There's 180 degrees in a triangle and 360 degrees in a circle. So remember, because of this fact, if your angles in that triangle are going to be doubled to give you the associated arc, won't 180 doubled always give you 360? It is the only shape that will always be able to be circumscribed inside of a circle. Quadrilaterals, they happen sometimes, but not necessarily all of the time. Pentagons, same thing. Only certain shapes of the other figures are allowed to happen. For triangles, you can circumscribe it every single time inside of a circle, okay? My second question. If you were given a circle of a particular radius, how could you construct a square inscribed inside the circle? So let's draw this said circle with a certain radius. So let's draw a circle and let's give it a radius. What is a radius? Half, of the Half the diameter. So start in the middle and draw it to the edge. <laughs> How could we make sure that we're drawing a square inside inscribed in this circle. Hayden? Was that a hand or you were just, okay. Cody? Like this? No? Okay. You draw another radius like down? Okay. Remember, it has to be a square. Well, what would we know would have to be the same length in a circle? The diameters, what else? All the radiuses, okay, the radii. So let's draw, for example, a diameter. Now, if that was the side of the square, would we be able to draw the entire square still inside the circle? No, there's no way. So what lengths in a square are also congruent? other than the sides, the angles. Think about lengths. In a square, other than the sides, what else is congruent in a square? What's the name of the line that goes from across the square? Not the diameters, the diagonals. So what if we made the diameters both of the diagonals. Could we now make each of these points our vertices and draw a square? Okay. Guys, this isn't something you'll see on an assessment. Okay, I just wanted to get you guys thinking a little bit. Okay, But it is possible every single square can also be 
inscribed inside of a circle because the diameter would be the diagonals, okay? All right, and we have one more example and then we're done, Zo peeps. I know the bell's gonna ring. Let's find X and Y in this example. Remember, what kind of shape is this, peeps? No, it's not a square. It's a quadrilateral, okay? And we know that the opposite angles must be supplementary, right? So X and 82, when I add them together, must equal? Equal 180. And the same thing must be true of what other two angles? Y plus 68 must add up to 180. This is where we're going to stop. X would be 98, and Y would be 112? Yes. Guys, go ahead, turn these in.